So in this video, I am going to teach you how to turn any portrait into a pop art portrait in the style of Andy Warhol, you know, them famous screen prints that he made. It's just a bit of fun, really. It's great practice if you're learning Photoshop. And actually, I'm making this video in requests that I get from UK school teachers. Every GCSE art student in this country wants to learn pop art, okay? So this is a way to use Photoshop and your own portraits to create pop art. And at the very minimum, you're gonna create a really cool profile picture for Facebook and Instagram and stuff like that, all right? So let's go into Photoshop and create a pop art portrait. So here's the picture that I am going to use. It's a picture of Humphrey Bogart by a photographer called George Harrell. Now, if you haven't heard of George Harrell as a photographer, you are missing out, all right? Go and check that guy out, Google him. George Harrell is famous for that Hollywood glamour style portrait pictures, obviously like this one here, fantastic photographer. Anyway, this is the picture that I'm gonna use for this task. Obviously you can use any picture that you want, but my one is already black and white. If your one isn't black and white, you need to change it black and white first. That's really easy. All you're gonna do is go to image, adjustments, and then you're gonna come down to desaturate there. So you're gonna to need to desaturate your picture, turn it black and white first. Once you've got a black and white picture, you need to duplicate the layer, okay? Now you can do that by right clicking and going duplicate layer, or you can do the shortcut key, which is Control or Command and J, and then you duplicate the layer. The next thing you're gonna do is you're gonna name that layer model, okay? And the next thing we need to do is enter quick mask mode and grab the pencil tool and draw within the model, okay? So you do that by coming over to your toolbox here and you're gonna click on quick mask mode. You're gonna come up to your brush tool here. If it's your brush you've got showing, you're gonna select the pencil tool. You need to make sure that your foreground color is black. You also need to make sure that your blend mode is normal here and your opacity is at 100%. And the other thing that you're gonna to need to make sure is that your brush hardness is on 100% there, okay? And mine is, so I'm just gonna press enter. Then you're gonna come over to your model here and you're quite simply going to draw on the inside of the model like this. Now obviously you can change your pencil size if it's too big or too small. The easiest way to do that is to right click on your screen and then you've got your size here and you can make that bigger or smaller. Press enter when you're ready. The other thing that you can do is you can use your bracket keys on your keyboard. That will make the brush bigger and smaller. And the other thing that you can do, which is what I like to do, is press the Alt and right click on your mouse and you slide your mouse backwards and forwards, or sorry, that's left and right, or up and down for a soft or a hard brush. So it's left and right for big and small, up and down for soft or hard. And that size is about right. Once you've got your brush size and everything, you're gonna go on the inside of the model like this, and it doesn't matter if you're going over the edge a little bit, all right? And the reason for that is the Andy Warhol uh, silk screens that he used to do, they were always a bit rough anyway. The, the edges were never perfect. So drawing by hand like this is gonna kind of mimic that. If you do go over the edge too much and you don't like it, just grab the eraser tool and erase some of this mask, okay? That's very easy to do. The eraser tool is here. You grab that, there it is. Come over to your image here change the brush size to whatever you want, and then you just paint back over like that, and there you go. Okay, so you, there is ways to tidy up the mask if you want to. Let's grab the pencil again, and let's carry on drawing around the inside of my model. And you don't wanna hang around while I'm doing this, so we will speed this part of the video up. So now I've drawn around the edge of the model, I just need to fill it with the paint bucket tool. So to do that, I'm gonna come over and grab the paint bucket tool from the toolbox here, come into the middle of my model, click, and it fills the model with the quick mask. The next thing that we need to do is turn that quick mask into a selection, really easy to do. All you do is press the Q key and it turns it into a selection like that. 
Now what we need to do is fill that selection with the color white. To do that's very easy, we go up to Edit, Fill, the shortcut is Shift and F5 if you want that. We click on that, we're gonna come over to Contents here, we're gonna select the color white, we're gonna make sure the blend mode is normal, the opacity is 100, and we're gonna click OK. And then we're gonna remove the selection by going Control and D, and that deselects it. Now the next thing that we need to do is put a little bit more contrast into our black and white image. So remember that this technique works on any black and white image. So it could be a picture of you, picture of Humphrey Bogart, whatever, but it does work better if it's a contrast image. So a really easy way to add contrast to your image is to go image adjustments levels, okay? And what we're gonna do is we're gonna adjust these levels to just pump some contrast into this picture. So in your levels property box here, you've got your black point, which is over this side, the white points, and then you've got your mid range here. So if I grab this slider on this side, which is the black points, if I pull that in, you can see that it's making the darks, the shadows, darker. It's making them blacker, so it's giving them more contrast. And if I grab the white point slider over here, it's doing the same thing, but with the whites. It's making the whites brighter, and therefore giving us some contrast. You can grab your mid-range slider if you want and play about with that, but I actually think that uh, this is not looking too bad at all. We can tick on and off the preview to see what's happening. There we go, okay. That's exactly what you want. You just want a high contrast black and white picture as a base to work on, right? So once you're happy with that, you just click OK. Now the next thing that we need to do is change the blend mode of this layer because this layer here, the model one, it needs to stay at the top. So we're gonna be adding loads of things underneath it in a minute. But this layer here, model, needs to stay at the top and it needs to have a blend mode of multiply which will enable everything that we put underneath here to shine through. So in the blend mode drop down box, which is this one here, we are gonna select multiply there, okay? So like I said a, a minute ago, it's gonna allow the colors that we're gonna add in a minute to shine through to the top layer, the model layer, except for the black parts. So the black parts and the dark parts are gonna stay and the colors are gonna shine through, okay? So let's put that into practice. I'm gonna add a new layer by pressing the new layer icon down the bottom here. I'm gonna name this layer background. So I double click on the word layer one there and type in background, press enter. And like I said a minute ago, the model layer needs to be at the top at all times. So I'm gonna drag this layer underneath the model layer and then I'm gonna fill it with a color. Same thing as before, edit, fill. And this time from the contents, we are gonna choose color and then you can choose whatever color you want actually. So let's, let's do a nice bright green, why not? And click OK, click OK again. And there you go, that color is now shining through all of the highlights, all of the white bits, but it's not shining through all of the dark bits and the shadows, okay? That's what the multiply blend mode is doing. The next thing to do is to add another layer by pressing the new layer icon down the bottom here again. This time, I'm going to name this one coat, like that. Press enter. And now what we're going to do is paint over the coat in whatever color you choose. So we need to select the brush tool first of all, which is over here in your toolbox. If we click and hold on the pencil tool, it brings up the brush tool there like that. Make sure that you have got your blend mode of your brush on normal and the opacity to 100 and your flow to 100 up the top here. And then down here is your foreground color. This is your foreground color. All we do is we click on that and then we choose a color to paint really. So let's go for a blue, a nice deep blue like that. There we go. Click OK and then we're gonna paint all in the coat blue. So that's all the coat painted in, in blue. Now we're gonna do the same for another part of the body if you like, and this time we're gonna choose the hat. So I'm gonna come down to a new layer icon here. I'm gonna click it. I'm gonna double click on the name layer one, and I'm gonna rename this layer hat. Press enter. I'm gonna make sure that I've got the brush tool selected again. This time I'm gonna choose a different color. So I'm gonna click on the foreground color and then over here, we will choose another color. Let's stick to the primary colors, shall we? 
Let's go to red and have a nice bold red color like that. I'm gonna click OK, and now we're gonna paint over the hat. All right, let's make that brush a little bit smaller. Again, this is gonna take some time, so we'll speed up the video. And that's the hat filled in there. And then basically you do exactly the same for all sections of your image. So we've got a shirt here, so I'm gonna do it for the shirt. We've got the face, so I'm gonna do it for the face. And you know, that's basically it, okay? So again, we're gonna come down to the new layer icon down in your layers panel. We're gonna click on that, double click on the word layer. This one I'm going to name shirt, press enter. Make sure you're on your brush tool that your opacity is at 100 and flows at 100 again. Come down to your foreground color here, click on it, choose a color, seeing as we're going for primary colors here. Let's go for a nice, really bright yellow, I think, like that. Okay, click OK, and change your brush size to suit, and then paint over the shirt. It's as simple as that, really. So I'm gonna to continue to do this, and we're gonna speed up the video. So that's the shirt done, now let's do the face, okay? Again, another layer, we're gonna add another layer. We're gonna name this one face, press enter. Select your brush tool, your foreground color, and this time let's go for like an orange or sort of a yellow ochre kind of color, maybe, maybe about there. I'm gonna click okay, and then paint over the skin. And there you go, there's the face done. So for argument's sake, you've just really quickly created an Andy Warhol pop art style portrait. Now, what I'm gonna show you in a minute is how to very easily now, now you've got your base if you like, how to very easily change the colors of each of these layers so that you can create several versions of one picture if you like, but in lots of different colors. But before I do that, let me take this opportunity to tell you about the courses that we run over at theschooloffphotography.com. If you wanna learn Photoshop properly, come over and see us. We've got a whole course in Photoshop, five-star rated course in Photoshop, and we teach thousands of people all over the world. We've also got courses in photography, Lightroom Studio Lighting, macro photography, landscape photography, and just loads and loads of stuff. Plus, there's lots of free previews as well, so you can come and try before you buy. So, if you are looking at learning Photoshop, photography, etc., properly, come over and see us at theschooloffphotography.com. Right, let's go back into Photoshop, and I'm gonna show you the next stages. First thing we wanna do is save this as a Photoshop file so that we don't lose it. So I'm gonna go File, Save As, and you can save it as whatever you want. I've got here um, Humphrey Bogart by George Harrell. Let's just put in here Pop Art version. Make sure you're saving it as a Photoshop file so that you can work on it again in the future. And to do that, you just make sure that Save As type here is Photoshop, okay? We're gonna click save. So now we've got a Photoshop file saved, which is great because we can go back and work on that, you know, whenever we want to. But what we wanna do now is we wanna save several versions in different colors. And we're gonna do that by saving them as JPEGs, all right? So let's first of all save this one as a JPEG. To do that, we're gonna go file, save as a copy. We are gonna select JPEG, this one here, from the save as type. And then in here, I'm just gonna type version one. Then we're gonna click save, and we'll leave our quality as 10, and we'll click okay. So for argument's sake, we've got a version of a pop art portrait saved. Now let's change the colors and create several different versions really, really easily, okay? And to do that, we're gonna add color overlays onto our layers. To add a color overlay, we double click on the layer, but in the blank part of the layer. And this is where layers can get a little bit fiddly. If I double click on the name of the layer, I can change the name of the layer. But I wanna double click on this area here, this blank area of the layer, and this layer style box appears, and that's what we want, okay? Come down to color overlay, and make sure it's highlighted like you see here. 
And then in this box, we're gonna click on it and we can change the background color to whatever we want. So let's just go for like pastel -y colors, I think this time, so a nice pastel -y blue. For the background, we're gonna click OK. We're gonna click OK again. Then we do exactly the same thing for the next layer up. That's the coat. So I'm gonna double click again. Remember in this area, in the blank area of the layer, the layer style box appears again. I'm gonna select color overlay. I'm gonna click on the color box. And then let's choose something else, maybe like a yellowy color. There we go, that's quite nice. I'm gonna click OK, OK again. Then we're gonna do the same for the hat here, the same for the shirt here, and the same for the face here, all right? The only thing that you need to make sure of is that this here, the model layer, always stays as the top layer, okay? And we'll speed up the video because you know it's just the same process again and again. And there we go. We've got another version of a pop art portrait in the Andy Warhol style, okay? Now you can see where we're going with this because once I create several of these, I can start putting them together like you would see in one of the Andy Warhol screen prints. So let's save this version as a JPEG. Again, file, save as a copy, select JPEG from the drop down here, and this time, we are gonna call it version two. And I'm gonna click save. 10 is fine again and click okay. So there you go, you can see now how quickly it is to create other versions. So what I'm gonna do now is I'm going to create another two versions. So I've got four in total, and then we're gonna make a collage of images so it looks like, like I said a minute ago, one of them Andy Warhol screen prints where you've got several on one image. All right, so I'm gonna quickly do that and I'll come back to you in a minute. So there you go, I've created four separate versions of a pop art portrait really quickly, here they are. I've saved them as JPEGs, I've also put them into a nice neat folder for you all here. So I've got the PSD version, the Photoshop version, so that's always there if I wanna go back and you know re-edit and do other things, that's always there for me. Then I've got version one, version two, version three and version four and they are all looking very pop arty, okay? Now what we've got to do is put them into one image so that they're all next to each other and they look like the Andy Warhol screen prints. So let's go into Photoshop and do that. So let's just minimalize this and, and I'm gonna save this, which is the Photoshop version. I'm gonna press Control and S to save it. Command and S if you're on a Mac. And I'm gonna close that down. And the next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to load all of them versions that I've created, all of them JPEGs, I'm gonna load them as a stack in Photoshop. And it does exactly what it says on the tin there, it's just gonna load them in layers, one on top of the other, okay? So to do that, we go over to File, Scripts, Load Files into a Stack. The Load Layers property box appears. We're gonna click on Browse. You need to then find your saved JPEGs, and here are mine here. You select all of the ones that you want to open up into a stack. So this is version one, two, three, and four. I don't want the original uh, PSD open in the stack. And then I'm just gonna click OK. It's giving you a little preview as how it's gonna stack them. And then you just click OK. And over in your layers panel here, you can see that Photoshop has just loaded all of these layers as a stack, one on top of the other. So if I just hide them all, there's version four, there's version three, there's version two, and there's version one. So now we need to resize all of these layers to exactly the same size. So to do that, we need to select all of the layers at once before we resize them, okay? Now, the first thing I'm gonna do actually is I'm gonna press Control and zero to full screen it so that you can see it better, all right? Over here in the layers panel, we're gonna select all of our layers. Now you can do that by selecting the top one, holding down the shift key and selecting the bottom one, and it selects everyone in between for you. Then we're gonna use the free transform tool for this. That is a shortcut key is control and T or command and T, or you can go edit free transform here. And when you're in free transform mode, you can resize the pictures where you can twist them. You could do lots of different things, but for us, we just wanna resize them, okay? Now, because I've got four images, and I want to fit four on a page. I want it to be roughly a quarter of the size of what it is. 
So I'm gonna come down to the bottom corner here. I'm gonna click on it. I'm gonna drag it up to just roughly, it doesn't have to be perfect, roughly a quarter of the size of the page. Just like that, when you're happy, you can press the enter key or you can click the tick at the top. So now what you've got quite clearly is we've got four layers that are exactly the same size. Now all we need to do is move them around on our page here and you know arrange them how we want them to be. And we're gonna do that by selecting individual layers and moving them around. Now you can select individual layers by selecting them in your layers palette like this. So um, let's just select this one here, version one, which is the top layer. Let's come up to the move tool at the top here make sure that you have got auto select ticked off, all right, because otherwise you're gonna have all sorts of problems clicking and moving stuff around. So you want your move tool and auto select ticked off. And then you can click on the layer and you can quite simply move it around. Another really easy way when you've got layers stacked on top of each other is to right click on the stack and select the layer that you wanna move around, okay? So I can right click and it's telling me underneath my mouse that I've got version two, version three, and version four. If I right click over here, it's telling me all I've got is version one, okay? So if I come back over to here, I'm gonna right click, I'll select version two, and you should have seen over here that it selected version two. All right, I'll just do it again so you can see. Right click, select version two, I can right click, select version three, etc. okay? And it's a really quick way to select layers that are on top of each other. And it's the way that I like to work. So let's right click on this and select the top layer in this stack, which is version two. And then I'm gonna drag that down to here like that. Right click again, select the next layer, which is version three. And I'm gonna move that down like that. And now what I've got is four layers, all spread out nice and evenly on this page. I just want a bit of gap around the edges. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna right click, and select this layer here. I'm gonna come in slightly like that. Right click, select this layer here and do the same thing. Right click, select this one. And again, the same thing again. And the same thing for this one over here. All right, and there we go. I can crop this top bit off in a minute to make it all nice and even. But for now, that's looking good. I've got four se separate Andy Warhol style portraits on top of a background. Now, all I need to do is add a color to that background. That's very easy to do down in your layers panel, you're gonna click this adjustment layer icon here and you're gonna select solid color, okay? So I'm gonna select solid color. For now, let's just choose white like that. Click okay. Then I'm gonna click on this color fill layer. And I'm gonna drag it to the bottom and there we go. We've now got four screen print style images or pop art screen print style images on one page like that. If I wanna change the background color, it's very easy. I double click on this icon here and it brings up the uh, color properties box and you know you can get all sorts of funkiness if you want to. You can even go to black if you want to like that, but do you know what? White's pretty cool, so let's just leave it as white. I'm gonna click okay. I'm now gonna get the crop tool and I need to click clear at the top in the options bar and then I'm gonna drag that down to the bottom there like that. I'm gonna drag this one up to about there so it's kind of even with the bottom. Click the tick and there you go, there's your finished piece. You know, you can have four images like that, you can have six, eight, 10, however many that you want to. And as before, you can save this as a Photoshop file so you can add to it later on if you want to and a JPEG file as well so that you can share it on Facebook and Instagram and impress all of your friends. So I hope you've liked that. Like I said at the beginning, it's just a little bit of fun. If you did like it, you need to help us out, please. Press the like button. Tell us what you think in the comments, please. We love to hear from you all the time. So please put a comment in and share it with your friends if you think they will benefit from this video as well, okay? And of course, subscribe to the channel. You know that bit already, okay? So there you go, a really easy way to create pop art portraits in Photoshop. Don't forget, if you wanna learn Photoshop properly or photography properly, come over and see us at theschooloffotography.com and I hope to see you in the next video. I'll see you soon.